Welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. show you a recipe that I found in this book the whole nine months and I wanted to make this recipe with you I'm not going to give the exact measurements of the ingredients because it's not my book it's not my recipe if I had gotten it for free off Google then I would share the exact measurements but I just feel like if you want to make it you should probably buy the book <laughs> <laughs> and um, I feel like I shouldn't, I don't know, I feel like there's probably some weird copyright law out there that I probably shouldn't share the exact recipe. But I will share the ingredients and the page that I get the recipe on. It's page 109 and it is called Vegan Banana Muffins and they are so good. My kids love them and I'm loving this book. So this pregnancy... I started out a lot heavier in weight than I would have liked to. I I was nervous because I'm starting where I normally end at a pregnancy level weight. And so I've been watching what I eat, watching my portions. Lucky, I was really, really sick the first 11 to 12 weeks. So I'm on week 13 now, so I'm barely starting to feel less sick. But I lost like 7 to 9 pounds that first like this first trimester. So I was kind of glad about that because, so lucky I was really sick and I was I was just kind of glad that I lost some weight in the first trimester because I really didn't want to go into labor and delivery being, I was in the heavy category or overweight is what I was deemed as. And I was like, ah, I'm kind of nervous about that <laughs> because my best labor and deliveries are the ones where I've been more in shape and more connected with my body. So it's been interesting starting out of pregnancy in the overweight category. But it's okay because now that I'm not as sick and I've lost some weight from the first trimester, I've started walking and I'm getting kind of back on track and I'm still trying to eat healthier, which I think will be really beneficial to me and the baby. So let's get started. Okay, so listen to the ingredients. Pure maple sugar, two ripe bananas, ground cinnamon, coconut oil, vanilla extract, unsweetened soy milk, flour, ground flax seed, baking soda, and kosher salt. And it says wheat flour. I think I still have wheat flour. If I don't, I'm gonna use regular white flour. I know wheat flour is better, but gotta use what you have, right? So, all right, I'm gonna get all the ingredients. As you can see, I don't have the exact ingredients. I don't have kosher salt. I just have iodized salt. I also don't have pure vanilla extract. I have imitation. So it's not exactly like the recipe. It's still gonna taste really good and I think it'll still be pretty healthy. So yay, better than like a donut, right? <laughs> okay, so first things first, I need to preheat the oven to 350. And the next thing is to line the baking cup. I do have some cute, kind of plain, but I think they're really cute, muffin cup filler things. What are these called? Baking cups. I like this color. I think it looks like what you would get in a bakery. So it made me feel all fancy. I'm gonna fill, it says, two eight standard cups but my muffin tins i don't know i thought they were standard but they're 12. so maybe mine are just for cupcakes <laughs> i don't know anyway 
I'm gonna feel extra because I can always just take these out. Because that would be 16 muffins. And I have 24, so I don't know how much it'll make. Last time it made a lot extra, and the first time I did it, it made less, so who knows? Maybe I'm not good at measuring ingredients. Every time they've turned out really good, so that is good. This is the fourth time I'm making this recipe, so and not, not that anyone cares, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> And these were one of the only things that I really wanted to eat when I was feeling pretty sick. So if you're feeling really sick, maybe give these a try. Um, if you're having a hard time keeping down food, I know in early pregnancy it is tricky to navigate what tastes good, what you can even eat because your body just doesn't want the same things as it normally does. Mine, mine anyway. I get pretty sick and nothing sounds good. So totally understand that. Okay, so these are filled. I don't think we're going to need all 24, but they're filled just in case. Next, we're going to mush the banana. And I'm going to hit pause because I want to put my hair back. I get grossed out if hair gets in food. So I'm going to grab a hair check. Okay, next step. In a large bowl, combine the maple syrup, banana, cinnamon, coconut oil. So I'm going to mush the bananas first. I have this cool little thing. I have no idea what it's called. It used to be my grandma's, but when she moved, she gave me some stuff. So this serves. I know it's for mashing potatoes as well. So can you? I've used it for bananas. So I'm gonna mush the bananas first. I'm using my smaller bowl because I'm gonna do the flour and everything in this one and then pour the wet mixture on top of the flour. So I think this bowl will be big enough. It's not very large, but that's okay. I let my bananas get a little too ripe. I was planning on doing this last week, so these bananas have really been hanging on. <laughs> they don't look too bad. They'll be fine for cooking. They're not very appetizing. Like at all. <laughs> I apologize when I walk off the screen. My trash can and everything is over there. syrup. Look how cute this bottle is. I just thought it was so cute. I've always just bought the cheap maple syrup, <laughs> which isn't really maple syrup probably. Maybe has a little bit of maple in it, but I don't know. Pure maple syrup is prettier. It's more expensive, but it was really pretty and tastes really good. So I'm going to add the amount listed here on this. Secret recipe, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess I can show you. Make sure I get it to the line. Okay. Some of you bakers out there probably can Guess how much I just put in. The next things I'm going to be adding to this mixture right here is the cinnamon, coconut oil, vanilla, and soy milk. So, cinnamon, coconut oil, vanilla, and the soy milk. I almost forgot to take a picture of this at the beginning of the kind I'm using. I don't know if it really matters. I think it's just up to you what you prefer.
I should have heated the coconut oil. I made this recipe in the summer when it was a lot hotter in my house, so the coconut oil was easier to scoop, but it's been a little bit chilly, so I think I'm gonna pop this in the microwave and see if some of that will melt a little bit so that it will mix up better. Or maybe I will throw it in a blender. Right now, I'm not loving the consistency of this. <laughs> And in the past, it wasn't this consistency. I'm not a fan of like, when you make banana bread, and you know how sometimes you can like, taste the chunks of banana? That, I don't know, and like zucchini bread, I'm the same way. I don't like chunks of banana or zucchini in my breads. So I like to blend it in a blender. Little tip, if you also have those like you don't like, you like the flavor of the bread, but you don't like getting that random mushy banana bite. <laughs> so you can just throw it in a blender. So I'm gonna see if I can melt this a little bit and then I think I will blend it up because I see a lot of banana still. And last time I was able to mush the banana a lot more, but these bananas were firm, even though they were like really, really ripe. <laughs> in the microwave, it's looking a lot better. There's still some clumps of coconut oil. So I'm just gonna blend it in the blender real fast and it'll be a lot better. In my opinion. <laughs> Come on, get out of there. It's a little more milk and syrup in there. I left there was a little syrup left in the bottom. That's why I just went ahead and poured the milk over it and then tried to mix it up a little so that I could get all of the syrup in there. You know what, I'm gonna bring this down a little. I am super short for those of you who don't know me in real life. And usually I stand on a stool to do these videos, but today I'm not. <laughs> so you get to see my real height. Okay, a little bit loud, maybe. There we go. No weird banana chunks for us today. Guess I could just leave it in this and pour it in. Yeah, I'll do that. I think there might be a little bit of cinnamon left on this sides here. I'm gonna try and get it all in. Okay. Put the lid on that so it doesn't spill. Next. In a large bowl, sift the pastry flour, flaxseed, baking soda, salt, and whisk that gently together to combine. Okay. This is just whole wheat flour. I've used it for the other times I've made these and it turned out fine. husband called these muffins a name that I'm not going to repeat, but you can probably guess what he called them because there's wheat and flaxseed and can really help you go to the bathroom. <laughs> it 
glue soda. pig it's almost noon and it wants a bottle I'm not giving in I'm trying to wean it a little bit this week down to two bottles salt I've learned over the years not to pour the salt over the bowl how much do I want Looks good. Okay, is that it? That's it, that's all the ingredients. Now it says to whisk this gently together. the syrup mixture to the flour mixture and stir together to make a batter. I'm going to use a wooden spoon for this part. I like wooden spoons. It says to use a measuring cup to scoop the batter into each muffin tin. I have this cute tiny soup ladle. I don't know where it came from, but it's very cute and I use this for my, for these. So it's a little bit, um, the consistency isn't, it's like in between cake batter and bread dough. It's not like a... Like banana bread dough is like a little bit thicker in consistency, you know what I mean? Anyway, it smells so good. They're, they're really, really good muffins. Like, really good. I was really surprised the first time I made them. Because it didn't use, you know, the regular white sugar for sweetener. Or even brown sugar. Like, I usually use brown sugar in my banana breads. And, um... It turns out really yummy. But bananas are super sweet on their own anyway, so if you think about it, and I don't know, the maple syrup just adds this really delicious flavor. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a chef or a cook. I'm just trying to cook a little more during this pregnancy, so. I got 20, 20 muffins out of that batter. So I'm gonna take out these last papers, like I said, just put them back in. They'll be good to go for next time. And the last step is bake these for 20 to 25 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean in the center. So I'm gonna put them in the oven and then we'll get them out in a few minutes. <laughs> I was waiting for that timer. <laughs> okay. Let me bring them over here to show you how they turn out. They smell so good. <laughs> okay. There they are. I love it because there's a picture in the book about the muffins and the first time I made them, they looked exactly like the picture. And 
Today, they look exactly like the picture, and it seems like every time I make them, they turn out exactly like the picture, which is always a good thing. <laughs> okay. Let's do this one. Nice and clean. I have this really cute glass cake holder. I don't know if that's what you call it, but you can like put muffins on display in it and it looks just like a bakery. And it's always fun. When these are totally cooled down, I'll put them in that glass thing and then my kids will be really excited when they come home from school. But I'm gonna need one now, even though they're very, very hot. <laughs> So good. Can you see the steam? I'm trying to show you the steam. I don't know if you can see it. Ooh, it's like steaming. Mmm, so good. They're like the perfect amount of sweet. Very good. Now I'm chewing. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out and in this video I want to show you one more thing outside. I am, this year I am going to try, last year, I tried it last year but I failed. I want to overwinter a couple of my pepper plants inside. Now I've grown a habanero plant inside all year. Let me show it to you. And I put this plant outside for a couple of weeks and I just recently brought it back in. You can see. I put it outside because it wasn't producing fruit so I wanted the bees to pollinate it. So I put it outside and I brought it back inside and I had it in its own little corner in the plant room. Thank goodness because it has an aphid infestation. <laughs> So I am trying to handle this aphid infestation. Uh, I'm gonna be mixing up a neem oil solution tomorrow to put on it and I think it'll be fine because it's inside. Uh, neem oil, I've noticed I like using it. It's a great thing to use. Um, and it's an organic option to use for pest control. I, I started by trying just vinegar and water but it's not killing them. It's, it's a pretty bad infestation and I don't know how I missed it this long. But anyway, um, tomorrow I'm going to make a neem oil solution and use that. And But what I was going to say with the neem oil is that I use it on plants outside and you have to use it in the evening, otherwise your plant leaves will get burned by the sun from the neem oil because it is an oil. And so essentially it's like when you're going to go out tanning and you put oil on your skin, it's just like that for your plant. And um, I had a few plants that really suffered when I put the neem oil on them. So these pepper plants are going to be inside. So I'm assuming since there was aphids on this pepper plant that I put out there near the other peppers, I'm assuming those peppers outside also have aphids on them. I just haven't really inspected them. But there's a pepper, I believe it's a serrano. I have my chart because my brother and I were tasting the peppers last night and the ancho pepper was so, so yummy that I really want to grab one of those. And I, it was a red pepper, but it wasn't spicy. And it was like a good flavor. And that's why I think it's the Serrano. But I have my chart, so I'll be able to double check. So I'm going to take you guys out there with me really fast and figure out which pepper this is. And I want to dig the peppers up today and put them in pots inside today. So I don't know if all of that's gonna be on this video. I did wanna explain what was going on because I'll be doing the neem oil on all of those peppers tomorrow because I'm just gonna assume that since these peppers are coming in from outside that they have some problems too. So I'm gonna leave them all in my kitchen where I have less plants. I'm not gonna move them directly back to my plant room because then if there's any pests on them, then they'll get in there. But this is what I did wrong last year Last year, I put the peppers, I, I was gonna save two pepper plants, a jalapeno and a cayenne pepper plant is what I was gonna save, and I put them on my back porch. And I forgot about them, I didn't really forget about them, I knew they were there, and then the temperature dropped 
really quickly. And where we live, that can happen, especially in October. We'll have days where we're like in the 80s and it's really nice and warm. And then it will plummet down into like the 30s and 40s. And so that's why I want to get these pepper plants tonight. I was actually going to save and do all this on a video tomorrow. But I just looked at the weather and it's supposed to get down to 48 degrees. And peppers really don't like to get that cold. So I am going to quickly do this right now and get them and plus it rained a whole bunch yesterday so the ground should be pretty soft for me to get a shovel down in there and get as many of the roots as I can so that's what I'm doing let's go out and look at these peppers and let these muffins cool off I was hoping I could squeeze by without the pig seeing me but it saw me you can hear it crying it's such a mess in here it, I completely neglected it but I see some really big bumblebees that I love. Look how beautiful. All right, so right now I have three pots. I think I would really like to save a pepperoncini plant too. And then this little pepper down here, it's kind of getting shaded out. It produced some really yummy sweet peppers. So I might want to pull out this one too. If it survives through the night, um, I can get some more pots tomorrow after I drop my kids off at school and I can do this one tomorrow. So hopefully it survives. It's gonna get, I'll put this over it and it'll probably protect it. So these were the peppertinis or peppersinis, however you wanna say that. We had one habanero plant over here. It was really mixed up, okay. I'm gonna figure out which are which and then I'll be right back. So right here, these really long skinny ones, these were the ancho peppers. I had two rows of them and I'm going to dig out one of them. So I'll be picking the one that looks the healthiest of those. And then I had Basil Bajo, which they didn't produce like I thought that they would. So I don't know, I would like to see if I can extend their life a little longer too. So those aren't the red ones that I found. So those are two rows of poblanos and then early jalapeno. I'm not gonna save any of those. Then I had an eggplant and then a serrano. So that little plant is one of the serranos. I don't think that's the red one that we liked so much. So run off Because I thought I had gotten it from over there. Oh look. This looks really, it's really a lot smaller but it looks like the pepper that I harvested. So maybe it was from this plant. These plants are so neglected right now. It's very sad. Because <laughs> that's definitely not one. That's. But that's. Well, I came out here hoping to solve the mystery, but now I'm just feeling more confused. So, I'm going to go ahead and dig up a couple of these pepper plants to put inside tonight. And I will show you what those are tomorrow. And hopefully, I have them labeled correctly. <laughs> See, there's one of the red ones that we liked. Here we go. They were these. There's one that fell off. What is this guy right here? I think it's Poblano. I think that's Poblano. I can't say it now. No. No. Yes. <laughs> confused right now okay pb stands for poblano no pb stands for paseo bajo so i think that we really liked the paseo bajo pepper so i'm gonna dig up this plant right here and i'm not gonna film it <laughs> i'm just gonna call it good with the filming today and i will show you the peppers tomorrow that i'm gonna save inside I'll only get three today and tomorrow if I can stop by the store 
I will pick up a couple more pots so that I can plant a few more in the house. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Sorry I can't give you the exact measurements on things, but if you really want the recipe, I there was a bookmark in that. I really recommend this book right here, The Whole Nine Months. It's a great one. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate the love and support that we are receiving. I also want to invite anyone who has not yet subscribed to please go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Have a wonderful day. Bye.